Hi, my name is Justin Odisho, and welcome to the first episode of Every Filter in Photoshop Explained. This is a series where I'm going to take you through the filter menu and show you what each folder does step by step and examples. So I've got a photo open, and you'll notice a lot of times when you open a photo, it's like locked as the background layer. One concept that's really good to know in Photoshop is the concept of smart filters. So if you ever go to filter, convert for smart filters, you'll notice that it'll turn your layer into a smart object, which you can also always just right click and convert to a smart object as well. But now if I ever add a filter on it, so let's just say I add a blur, Gaussian blur. If I ever add a filter onto that, you'll see that all of my filters are under the smart filter section. So I can add other things as well. Like I can add distortions maybe. And you'll see they all kind of stack up and arrange. And I can rearrange them. Let's say I wanted the, the ripple first or the blur first. And you can also double click on any of these sliders and adjust the strength and opacity of the filter and even the blending mode of the filter. So in this way you can go back and forth. You can hide stuff without destroying your original photo. And also it gives you a layer mask to work with. So let's say I only wanted all of those effects to appear on the left half of my photo. I can go to a black and white gradient and make sure I have that smart filter white mask selected. And if I add that black and white gradient, you'll see everything that's black disappears and everything that's white gets filtered. And that's just how layer masks work on any layer. Very important important thing to note. And in this way, you have tons of flexibility all on one layer without even destroying or altering the original photo. You don't have to undo a bunch of stuff if you want to go back. Some other things to note in the filter gallery is you have your traditional folders of filters. So all the standard blurs, distortions, sharpens, but you also have a few things up here. Some of these are like their own plugins and their own whole menus, such as the camera raw filter. This is like if you ever open a photo that was shot in raw format on your camera, it'll allow you to adjust the exposure, contrast, highlights, and all that. So it's kind of like its own little menu. And you also have the lens correction and adaptive wide angle, some more lens corrective type things. And then liquify is its own whole thing as well. You have all the different liquefaction tools where you can smudge and liquefy your photo. And lastly, you have the filter gallery. So this is where they've kind of thrown in a bunch of the artistic type of folders all in this gallery. And a lot of these are pretty self-explanatory visually, but I'll do an episode on that next. Lastly, you'll see that whatever the last filter you used will always show up here as the most recent. That can come in handy, for example, if you added a little bit of blur and you want to just repeat a couple times for some extra strength until you're satisfied. So that's a brief introduction to Photoshop filters and how to apply them. In the next videos, I'm going to actually go through each of the gallery, liquify, and all these folders and show you examples and ways to use them and what the different filters do. So you'll be able to find all these videos in a playlist on my channel, and you can subscribe to my channel here on YouTube to stay tuned for all of my new videos. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you over in the next episode where we cover the filter gallery.